I'm at 121 out of love. Wait, no, we didn't do it. We just talked about it. Come on, man. They're, they're begging for it. They want you to do a TikTok. Come on. Well, I'll tell you what. There's one one number I really like. What's it called? Strutting. <laughs> Silhouettes of you are like a ton Never really know just what you want With you I don't ever feel Before all that, before I started dancing I worked in North Woolwich at Harland and Wolf as a welder Oh, this is in the middle of the 60s, early 60s I don't know how I got the job I, I, I did a bit of welding before this but I had to go for an interview and the, the man who interviewed me said, uh, do you play football? I said, yeah, I do. He said, oh, good. He said, what's your team? I said, West Ham. He, oh, little did I know, everyone, Harland and Wolf, was a West Ham supporter. <laughs> so I think that got me in and got me the job. I used to live in uh, Welling. When we moved out from uh, the East End, we moved into Welling in Kent. And I used to use my bicycle and cycle down to Woolwich. And there's a walk under tunnel. I guess it must still be there, just a walk through. So I wheeled my bike and walked through and then cycled up to Harland and Wolf. And it was amazing. You know, I forget what time we started, 7.30, something like that. But because of the nature of, of the industry all around there, Clubs were open, they had special licenses so that people coming off the night shift and so on could go and get a beer. Yeah. And about a year. And the pe other people that were doing the apprenticeship, do you keep in contact with any of them and do you know where they ended no up? One. On? No it's one. Sad. One person, uh, when, I, when I was doing Strictly Come Dancing, of course, uh, got a bit of recognition from being on TV, as you do. And one guy, my either my email address or my phone number or so I don't know how he got it but he recognized me from being a uh, working at Harlem Wolf and uh, I didn't know him really well but uh, he contacted me and I went and met up with him and had a chat with him about the old times. London communities now do you think they're really different to your time when you're working there? I like, well I guess they must be really uh, you know, I've always thought of London as a collection of like little villages. When I was a kid, we were in Bethnal Green and we had, we lived in one street, which is no longer there, called Harold Street. And uh, it was just a huge row of houses, 150 yards, all joined together. And that was our little world. And, and, and we, we played down there and uh, I, uh, none of the doors were ever locked. You know, because there was nothing much to nick anyway, so... And, and you'd go in every other kid's house and play and so on. So, and, and when I remember, how I remember North Woolwich, once you got through that tunnel and carried that bloody bicycle up the stairs, <laughs> uh, there I was. And again, that was like a little, a little village, a little world. It was like a little area where factories were. Uh, when I went with my wife, because we were going somewhere in Essex, uh, I, was, I couldn't recognise it anymore. Couldn't I? You know, I know the Royal Doctor were there and, and so on. But where did Harlan and Wolf vanish to? Yeah. It was huge. It was a great big factory across the street. That's where the, the the dock was. I don't know what happened to it all. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, Listen, I'm of an age where everything in the past seems better, you know, even though it wasn't. Mm. Uh, so, you know, I'll I tell you a little thing that uh, there used to be a, a rock and roll guy called Little Richard. And it was when Elvis Presley had just started and uh, he became really big and he was in films and stuff. And somebody said to little Richard, uh, what do you think of Elvis? And he said, he got what he wanted. 
but he lost what he had. <laughs> and I think that's a little bit like North Woolwich. I guess they got what they wanted, but they definitely lost what they had. Yeah, for sure. Um, how did your experience of Harland and Wolf come to an end? Well, I got in to dancing, right? I started going to a dance school, and learning Amazing. to dance. And there I was, I was just a beginner. And I started dancing with a, with a girl from the, whose dad owned the dance school. And he started giving us private tuition. And so I got uh, really into it, you know? And uh, he, he suggested that I stop work. And if I practiced, uh, because he had his own dance studio, we could go all the time. And he would sort of sponsor me. And, and uh, so that's what I did. It was when dancing got in the way. Otherwise, I'd have probably still been welding there till for the place shut up. Yeah. Len Goodman, a former British exhibition dance champion who was a long-time judge on the hit BBC reality competition Strictly Come Dancing as well as its American spin-off Dancing with the Stars died on Saturday in a hospice in Kent, England. He was 78. The cause was a bone cancer, his agent Jackie Gill said on Monday, Mr. Goodman had been working until up to a few weeks ago, Mrs. Gill added. Mr. Goodman was the head judge on Strictly Come Dancing from its debut in, 20, in 2004 until 2016. The show in which celebrities are paired with professional dancers has been one of the BBC's top rated programs. It has been exported to dozens of countries around the world, including the United States, where Dancing with the Stars premiered on ABC in 2005. Mr. Goodman judged Dancing with the Stars from its debut until last year. He was known for addressing contestants with worry humor, charm, colorful phrases, and a distinctive delivery. He retained his sense of humor during his illness and dealt with it with great dignity, as said Mrs. Gill. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.